cheers to your new van. Crack a tin, soda water maybe. Sit back, just enjoy yourself because you can go off grid. Mm. But I got no battery power. Nothing charges properly. My van's too heavy. But it's brand new. What? Hey guys, welcome to this video. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jimmy and I'm gonna make this video really detailed about some things you need to check before you drive out with either your new van or a second hand van. I'm not gonna talk for too much before I get into it, but just very quickly, the reason I put this video together is I've actually um, pretty disappointed uh, in traveling on the road and meeting all these amazing people. In just the last couple of months, I've probably met half a dozen people which have had major issues with their van um, from new, and they've also paid a fortune for their electrical systems and they're, they're pretty crap, to be honest. So I'm gonna give you some information which you can check before you drive out with your new van or before you go pick up a second hand van of things that you can check before, hopefully even you put down your last dollar. Because I know like me, um, we've got put our hard earned money into buying a quality product uh, very happy with my van. It's been amazing. We've had no issues with it, but realistically traveling on the road for the six months that we have been, I've really learned a lot of things and I can see a lot of issues with new vans that are coming out of factories because they're pumping them out so quick. So I'm not going to talk about any brands or anything like that. All I'm going to talk about is the things that you can check for yourself when you pick up your new van right then and there so you can sort those issues out straight away because it takes three weeks or four weeks of travel and you'll start to know these issues and you'll have the Okay, so let's get straight into it. So before you go and pick up your van, please set up your car properly. When you go to pick up your van, what'll happen is you'll go to connect everything up and you won't be sure whether there's an issue with the van or whether there's an issue with your car. The best thing to do is find someone that you can trust to do your car and do a good job Tell them what you're getting put in your van and then they should be able to put the right bit of gear in your car to make sure your van is charging properly and to make sure it hitches up correctly. So some of the biggest things I've seen is small cables running to the back of your car. The other thing I've seen too is whether you're overloading your alternator and I've also seen things running off dual batteries to charge your van which is just not good enough because you need to run separate circuits directly off your alternator. Also the other thing I've seen is things not fused. Things need to be fused because they stop your car from burning to the ground if there is an electrical fault. So fuses protect the cable and it's really, really important that things are fused properly. So talk to someone who does 12 volt systems or if, you, if you're good enough to do it yourself or tackle it yourself, make sure you do the proper research and run the biggest size cable you can to minimize voltage drop so that when you go to hook up to your new van, you can be 100% certain that you can get 30, 50, 60 amps out of the back of your car through the Anderson plug whether it's a 50 amp Anderson plug or move up to a 120 amp Anderson plug and make sure the gear you use and the crimps you use are all high quality. So that's rule number one. Make sure your car is set up before you go to pick up your new van. If your car is not gonna be set up, hopefully the manufacturer has something there so they can show you that they've actually tested their system. Also, just to add to that, just make sure you've tested it. It may be installed and you may have had the 12 volt guy do it, um, auto electrician do it for you, and he's been you know, really, really good, but he may have made a mistake. So you need to be sure that it's been tested before you actually go to pick up your van and make sure you load it up and see that your alternator can put out that output that you require for countless hours driving on the road, even at idle, see what it puts out. So really, really important stuff there. Your vehicle's gotta be set up before you go to hitch up to your new van. Okay, so it's the day you're gonna go pick up your new van. You're so excited. You've just spent a fortune on all these extras and you really, really can't wait to get in and see it. What's gonna happen is when you pick up your new van, I'm talking from experience myself because when we got our van, it was just over my head. There was so much information to take in. But if you can take a checklist in with yourself, you'll be able to methodically go through and make sure you haven't missed anything before you drive out of that dealership. Because once you drive out of that dealership, this is what I'm finding from people, is that sometimes they don't even wanna know you. So you might've just spent 100K on a van, and yep, the salesman has told you that it can do all this stuff, you can go off grid, you'll be able to spend as much time off grid as you want because you'll have all the electrical power you need. Sometimes it's simply not true. 
I've met a, a lady friend of mine, met it a few months ago. She was having issues with her brand new $100,000 van. And what was happening was the 200 amp hours of lithium was going flat in no time at all. Couldn't work out why. She's got nowhere near enough solar. Her car doesn't charge properly because the cables are way too small on the van and also the car. And then the other issue is she's also got a load of fridge, the compressor fridges, which are great, but it's drawing five to six amps out of it the whole time. So if she tries to use anything else, she can never get the charge back in it. So there's just a quick example of some issues that are coming up. So I'll throw a quick little checklist in at the bottom of in the description so you guys can add to it if you want or take things out depending on what you've got in your van. But the couple of things I would recommend that you get before you go to pick up your van. A portable scale. Now this scale I've used, I've had it for about probably 12 months now. It's been fantastic. I've found that it's pretty close to the wave bridges I've been over. I've been really, we're on our limits with our weights, so I'm really, really pedantic in making sure that we're always um, legal. And so this scale is super easy to use. You can use it on your tow ball. You can use it for a dual axle caravan and also a car. The one I've got is rated at a ton. So you just need to be careful that if you're gonna be driving over it with a ton and a half or something like that, you need to go to the next one up. So this is it here, super easy to use. Just turn it on. Put it under the wheel, make sure you're not going to drive over this part of it. Put it under the wheel, um, leave it for a few minutes to calibrate, and then make sure it's on a flat, clean surface. And also I put a few boards, this is what they recommend, either side the same height as this, about 100 mil apart, and just drive straight over it and it will pick up the weights for you. Awesome bit of gear. Okay, so the next bit of gear that I recommend you should buy is a tong slash multimeter. So you can probably pick a reasonable one up for a couple hundred bucks. I think the scale was about $300, and for another $200, you can probably pick up a pretty reliable meter. Now, this is gonna be handy for you to have on the road as well. The reason I say that is because this will give you the facts to ensure that your caravan system is working as it should, and also your car electrical system. So I'm a Sparky by trade. I did have fluke gear, but just to be on the road, um, I didn't carry that around with me. I've just bought a Chinese brand. Um, it's been fine. I've had it for probably a couple of years now. So this is a tong, so I can do DC and also AC current. And then also I can take voltage, I can take temperature, all sorts of things. And I'm pretty sure it was only about $200. It weighs next to nothing, but I can get accurate measurements to see what my electrical system is doing. So highly recommend taking one of those with you as well. By the way, I obviously can plug in my leads to give me the voltage when required as well. Okay, moving right along, and I'm sorry, I'm just gonna be looking down at my computer here just so I don't miss anything. When you turn up to pick up your caravan, they're gonna have a VIN plate or also a compliance plate, which is mounted somewhere to the van. It's gonna have your weights on there. So I met a couple just the other day that picked up their brand new van. Luckily, they went to a Weybridge straight away after they picked it up and they had 300 and something kilos already on their tow ball with nothing in the van. So that was the van stock standard, nothing in it, no water tanks full, no nothing. And they already had 300 and something kilos on the tow ball. So it left them no room for error because they've only had a maximum of 350 kilos they can put on their tow ball. And that's the same with most vehicles, unless you move to like a 2500 or something like that, or a small truck, their weights will weigh out and they had to go back to the manufacturer and try and deal with them. And the manufacturer just wanted to give their money back to them. So I really feel for them. They, they needed their van. They'd waited months and months to get it. The weights were way out. So what they did was they moved a whole heap of stuff in their van behind the axles, which is really not cool anyway. Much weight as possible should be over the axles. So, so when you first pick up your van, if you've got this scale with you, you can quickly check the weights of your van. You can check the tow ball and you can check it to the compliance plate to make sure that it's pretty close to what they've actually said. That's really important because your payload of your van may not be that much. You may only have five or 600 kilos and it doesn't take too much once you start to fill up water tanks and things like that to overload your van. So if you take your van away and then you go ahead and you work this out three weeks later, a month later, is that dealership gonna to wanna to deal with you so much? Definitely not. When you're there, you can deal with it straight away and they can get it fixed because you haven't even driven out with the van. So that's something I really, really recommend. Check your weights before you drive out with your van. Okay, so the next thing that I recommend is to really know your system. So when you first get your van, you're gonna go through and you may have spent in an extra 10, 15, 20 grand, who knows, on your lithium electrical system. 
So that's a lot of cash that you're gonna be dropping on that. You wanna make sure that it's gonna work as exactly as they have told you that it's gonna work. Like I said, I've met people on the road so far that have just paid all this money for this awesome U-boot lithium system. But to be honest, the system is crap because it's not set up properly. They can't get the right amount of charge back in. So they're running out of power in no time at all. And they're not even really using anything. So the things you need to check on are, what size batteries have you installed? Are they the right size? Are they the size that they told you they have installed? How much solar do you have? Is it the right amount of solar that you paid for? How many panels do you have? And how is that solar wired up? How are your solar panels connected? Are they connected in series, parallel, or are they connected in some series and parallel strings? It's probably really important to know because if you do go that slightly higher voltage, you can get major efficiency benefits. It obviously takes a bit of understanding to work that out, but if you're talking to the guy that's installed it at the factory, they should be able to tell you exactly how they've installed it, especially if you paid really good money for that system. So the last thing to really talk about there is what sort of charges do you have and how many charges do you have? So just remember, you've got a couple of ways that you can charge your batteries. You can charge it from the alternator of your car. And like we said earlier, you have run decent enough cables to get to the back of your car. And then we need to check on the manufacturer to make sure they've run the right cables and the right size going from the drawbar into your battery system. The other way to charge is obviously solar. So if you're sitting up for a few days, you're not gonna be driving your car, you wanna make sure your solar can put enough in to counteract the amount of power that you're using so that you're not running out of power whilst you're off grid. Okay, moving right along. You come to pick up your van, what are you gonna do? My recommendation is to inspect everything. Inspect inside every single cupboard, turn on every single water tap, um, check that there's no leaks everywhere, test everything. I had another example of a friend that told me when they went to pick up their van, they didn't test their um, little 12 volt fans. And what happened was they were on the road and he went to plug in, it wouldn't work and it was over his child's bed. What he found was there was a big piece of plastic shoved up in the socket where the fan plugged into. They didn't even think to test that because they were so overwhelmed with all the other stuff that they had to look at when they were getting the handover with the van. So everyone's gonna be really excited when you get your handover, especially the salesmen, they're gonna be like super stoked for you that you've got your new van. And some manufacturers, they've been pumping these vans out so quickly, super quick, that they haven't tested stuff properly. I just came across a major lithium system. This guy paid 18 grand for this system and nothing was tested two lithium charges off the DC to DC, never been tested, and then also the solar controller. He had to set it up himself, yet he paid a mint for this setup. I had a look at it with him. The cables were too small all over the place. We had to rerun all new cables for him. Man, you could tell he was just devastated and he was upset after paying all this money. And then what's he gonna do? Take it back to them and say, rewire it? Just doesn't happen, especially when you have the other side of Australia and sometimes they don't even wanna know you, so. These are some of the key points that I recommend you really should check, and I'm just gonna run through them quickly. So, inspect the batteries and the wiring. Make sure you're happy with how it looks. If it looks like a dog's breakfast, make sure you say something and you want it fixed, because if it's a dog's breakfast, you can't, you can't fault find properly, and it's very, very hard to fix stuff. Especially if the next guy comes along and you get someone that does a high quality job, they're not gonna even know where to look, and then you're gonna have to pay them more to work out how the system works, because nothing is labeled, nothing is run properly, it's all just a mess. Another thing too, are the batteries secured properly? If you can get your batteries and move them, and this is at the factory, it's not good enough. You need to tell them to secure your batteries properly. If the batteries move around on a rough road or something like that, and they have the potential to move enough, I've heard of a van burning down in the middle of Australia, a brand new van driving across central Australia, and then the flames actually went onto their brand new 200 series Land Cruiser as well. So the batteries being secured is really, really important. And that will also prevent your battery terminals from touching anything they shouldn't and causing a fire. Are you satisfied with the quality of workmanship? That's a huge one. Go and inspect cupboards, make sure things are done properly. Make sure there's not screws sticking out the back of some cupboards into another cupboard or something like that. Like that shouldn't be happening. It's a caravan, they've been making them for years. They should know how to sort that stuff out. Is your shower door mounted properly? Does your sink not leak? You know, all these sorts of things. Um, does your water tanks work properly? Get them to fill the water tank up and actually run through a cycle of the water tank. See how much power your water pump's using, you know? All those sorts of things are really, really important. So are your batteries located in a good position? Have they put them at the back to counteract the weight? 
then you've got a massive cable run from trying to charge from your car right to the back of your van. So they've, you could have added another five meters of cable, you know? So that's not good either. But are your batteries mounted in a good, safe position where they're not gonna get damaged and they're not gonna get dirty? Um, and they are looked after, especially if you've paid $2,000 for a battery or something like that. So is your battery management system located in a good position? Is it down under the bed? Is it tucked away in a cupboard? Is it accessible? So this is what you're going to use to gauge how much power you've got left in your batteries, how much solar's coming in, how much charge is coming in from your alternator. This is the most important thing you're gonna be looking at all the time. So is it mounted in a position where you can easily access it and look at the information you need to? I've seen so many where they're tucked away in cupboards or under the bed and you know, it's just a nightmare. I don't know why anyone puts it there other than probably being lazy and they don't wanna run the cables to the proper position or they just don't know what they're doing. So something really important, are you happy with the location of the battery management system? This is just a real little point to add in, but are things mounted square? Like you're gonna be looking at this stuff all the time, especially if you're using it to travel Australia and you open the cupboard and you see switches are like crooked and not mounted straight, not in line, are they even level? Like that's just quality workmanship and that just shows you what the manufacturer, how much pride they actually take in their work. Like I said, you're paying good money for this van. You've waited months and months and months. They should be able to get small details like that right. And if not, speak up because it needs to be right. Okay, so lastly with this video, I'm just gonna talk about putting the van through its paces. Now, I know that you're probably in a bit of a hurry when you're there to pick up your van because they've probably got someone else lined up after you. But realistically, like I said, you have paid top dollar for your van and you've also waited a long time. So now is the time to sort out any bugs. And I'm completely understanding that we all make mistakes and the manufacturer may have made a couple of mistakes, but then and there is the time to pick it up because they still it's still at the factory. They are there with you and you may not have handed over your last dollar yet, so you still have some leverage. So if you can hold off handing over your last dollar, I highly recommend it so that you have some leverage over them because once you hand over that last dollar, I have heard some horror stories where they just don't want to even know you. But being at the factory, at least they're going to do everything they can to keep you happy so that you talk good about their brand. So this is really, really important. And I hope you've stuck around to this point. And if you have, thank you so much. Um, this is what I recommend. Bringing your car in, connecting it up, get your tongue out and actually put some load on the batteries. So put some load on them, turn the air conditioner on. If you've got a lithium system with an inverter and whatnot, put some load on the batteries, get your tongue out and actually put it directly onto the charger that's coming out of the back of your car. So you'll have the black and the red cable coming out of the Anderson plug at the back of your car and see what the DC to DC charger is allowing you to put in. So I have done several vans on the road already in the last couple of months where I've helped the owner upgrade the cable right from the draw bar all the way into the DC to DC charger. If you're trying to get 50 amps into your batteries or something like that, it needs to be at least two BNS cable, like 30 mil squared or even up to 50 mil squared. That really may seem like overkill, but trust me, it's not. If you're talking 12 volts, you're gonna have major voltage drop issues, which also causes heat in your charger. And the charger is maybe only gonna take in like 10 amps or something like that, just because it's going through a tiny, tiny little cable. It needs to be a real big cable because you don't have the voltage there. So really, really important. Put your tongue on see exactly what is going into the charger. And then you can also see out of the charger what's going into the batteries. Check the BMS, the battery monitoring system, your screen. It should tell you what is going into the lithium batteries. It also should tell you what's coming out. So the other thing too is to go outside, make sure the van is sitting outside in the sun. You might have overcast conditions or something and that's just a bit unfortunate. But if you've got perfect sunlight, you need to see what the solar is actually putting into your van. Now, just remember, if you've got a compressive fridge, your fridge is probably gonna be drawing five amps out of those batteries a lot of the time. So as good as those fridges are, if you're gonna go off grid, but you've only got two solar panels, there's no way it's gonna cut it. Because if you get any overcast conditions, seriously, you're gonna run out of power in no time, especially if you're trying to use your inverter a couple of times or you run some fans or some lights, and then you're not driving, or your charger from your car can only put in 10 amps because it's got a little tiny six mil cable running right from the front of your car all the way into the caravan, it's not good enough. The manufacturers need to be putting in decent enough cables to handle the voltage drop into those chargers. The other thing to look at too is, what are the terminations like going into the chargers? You may not be um, 12 volt enthusiast like I am or a Sparky or anything like that, but seriously, you guys can stick your head down there, have a look and just see, because you will quickly pick up 
are terminations done where bits of copper are hanging out of terminals or anything like that like that's not on it's not good enough you're paying top dollar like i said it needs to be done right so if you've only got two solar panels and you've got a compressor fridge, I highly doubt that you'll have enough charge power to keep you going. You really need to have excess extra solar panels, but at least if you're aware of it then and there from the factory, and they might have sold you on that saying, oh, you'll be fine, you can go off grid. At least, at least when you drive away from there, you'll know that I've got to go and find a 12 volt guy or I can go back to the manufacturer because they've done a really good job and I can get them to add some extra solar panels. Just remember it does add to your weight of your van obviously because some of those panels they're about you know 10 kilos each for a 200 watt panel or something but yeah at least you're aware of it and that you know you're not going to just drive out and be off grid and then you're going to run out of power in no time and be looking for a caravan park to plug in 240 volt so really really big point can you charge your dc to dc and solar at the same time so if you're driving along you want to be getting the most bang for your buck and if you don't have a massive solar system you're going to be wanting to charge with the car but still your solar can put in something as well while you're driving. So instead of just putting in 30 amps from the car, you might be able to put in another 15 from your solar. If you've only got two panels or something like that, it still all helps. Now, if you've got a big solar system, you may not need to hook up your alternator all the time, but you want the ability to charge with both. Most chargers won't give you that ability. Most chargers will either only go switch over to DC to DC from your alternator. And then when you disconnect that, they'll alternate back to solar or they might take a bit of solar, whatever they can, and still only put in the maximum of 30 amps. So this is an important question that you need to ask, how much can I actually put in at a maximum when I really, really need to? So for me, I have a separate solar charger as I do to a DC to DC charger. So both of them work independently and they will just charge. So I've been driving along and seen something like 75 amps going into my van, just driving along because my alternator can put in 30 amps and then my solar controller can put in between 30 and 40 with the panels that I've got. So here's another little tip for you. While you're driving along, your solar panels get cooled so they become more efficient too. So that's just something to be aware of. Okay, so one of the last things to talk about now is also your plugged in 240 volt power. So when you plug in, your battery charger is gonna fire up and it's gonna try and charge your batteries. So you need to understand how much power your battery charger can put in as well. Something that is really important, if you do have an inverter set up, you've probably got a changeover switch. I know some inverters, um, like the Enerdrive ones, are smart enough where they can switch over themselves. You don't have to have the changeover switch, but most of the time you'll have a changeover switch. So you can switch between shore power, 240 volt mains coming into your van, and you flick over to your um, inverter, and then your inverter, that will be completely separate to your shore power system, so the two can never be connected. Some really important keynotes there is to check the RCDs, make sure the RCDs actually operate. So turn it on to 240 volt mains and have it plugged in the side there. Make sure everything works. Go through, check your microwave, check your or every single power point, plug in, make sure it all operates as you expect, and then go to the RCD and press the trip button. It should trip. If it doesn't trip, there's an issue there. So the other thing to do is to flick it over to your inverter Turn your inverter on, and then you should have power on all of your power points in your van, and then go and press the trip button on that RCD. They should be separate RCDs, so check that out and make sure it operates. If it doesn't have an RCD, really need to get one installed, especially if you're lighting up every power point around your van, because it stops electrocution. And then the other thing to be aware of is to make sure you never have the never-ending loop. And if you don't know what the never-ending loop is, it's where you've turned your inverter on, and then you've got your battery charger, which is plugged into the 240 volt. So your inverter is gonna feed the 240 volt power point, which then turns your charger on, which then tries to charge the batteries. So obviously that's not good, and you wanna make sure that that is separated. Some other people that I met the other day, some amazing people, they have the issue where they have to go and turn that power point off manually every single time so that their charger doesn't come, come on. And in my book, you know, that's just not good enough. There's a way that you can wire it so that power point doesn't get power onto it. So that's something that you really, really need to be aware of. So I know I've covered a lot today, um, but I'll put the checklist down the bottom. Please share this video to people that are buying a new van or looking at buying a secondhand van, or if you're even just thinking about getting a van, these are some really, really important things you need to check out because sometimes they say buying a secondhand van, which has been on the road for a year or two, it usually has all the bugs ironed out, you know, so sometimes you're a lot safer buying that than buying a brand new van. 
Um, I've got no opinion either way. I just want people to actually get what they pay for. And I've seen too many instances lately where people, and you can see they're absolutely devastated because they have no idea about 12 volt. They've just gone to pick up their van. The salesman's told them they're good to go. They drive out the driveway and then they're like, my batteries are going flat. I can't keep the power up to it. I've always got to be looking for a caravan park or I'm overloaded. My weights aren't right, you know? Just all sorts of crazy issues that should have been addressed at the factory. So please share this just so it helps someone out. Um, I hope this video goes around to lots and lots of people that are looking at getting new vans. Anyway, that's the rundown on my thoughts on what you should look at when you go and buy your brand new caravan or your second hand van. So important to take the extra couple of hours while you're there to really ensure that you're getting exactly what you paid for and you're fully aware of how the systems work. Um, a lot of the time the salesman won't even understand. Uh, so if the salesman doesn't, make sure you find someone who does so they can tell you exactly how it works. And I don't reckon any question is dumb. Ask anything you want. If you're not sure about it, you really need to understand it because you're gonna be the one on the road trying to work out how that system works, especially if it's not doing what you thought or what you were told it was gonna do. So um, this is not a shot at any manufacturers in particular. I've um, met several people out there which are so stoked with their vans and they've had a really, really good outcome from buying a new caravan. But then I've met lots of people as well which are just really bums, you know. They paid high-end money, um, top dollar for a high-end brand. And is it really that high-end? Um, I beg to differ sometimes. So um, I hope manufacturers really take accountability for their actions and I hope they they start to do a better job looking after people when they drive away at their van. So um, it's a big investment, um, you know, it's a fair bit of cash to drop on something and you want to make sure it's working as you were told it was when you, when you met the salesman and you ticked all those boxes saying exactly what you wanted. So yeah, I mean, it's not rocket science, right? It's a caravan, 12 volt systems, lots of people do 12 volt now. So if you are unsure about 12 volt, I'll put the links of a couple of guys in here. Um, I don't know them by any means, but they are definitely 12 volt experts. I'm not a 12 volt expert, but I have a sparky background, so it makes it a bit easier for me to understand. But these guys are guns. One lives um, down south from Queensland, I think he's in New South Wales, and then another guy's over in America. And um, I just wanna give a shout out to them because uh, if you wanna learn something, these guys here are the ones to check out. So anyway, that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, I really hope you took something out of it and you learned something from this. Um, please guys, share this video around. It's not for me, it's for everyone else in Australia or America or whatever country over in Europe. If you're buying a van or a camper van, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Make sure you inspect it properly before you drive out the factory door. That's the biggest takeaway from here. Anyway, have a great day and I'll catch you later.